Hey Tim, look at this. Yeah, it needs work. Yeah. Hey Tim, how about this? Uh, still needs work. Darn it. How about this? Nice, high five. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Tim. I'm Michael. And this is TMI. The Tim and Michael Information Show. And so, tagging on to another idea that we were uh, almost talking about in one of our previous videos, there is a great documentary that if you have not seen, you need to see. Um, it's about the Superman film that didn't get made. I have not heard of it. Uh, I think the whole title is like The Death of Superman. Uh, no, Superman Lives, The Death of a Movie and What Happened. Something like that. I forget the full title. Uh, they talked to everybody. They talked to Tim Burton, Kevin Smith. They talked to, uh, well, I forget the other director or producer who was attached to it. Colleen Atwood, who was doing costumes. Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, they go from beginning, pre-visualization, all of the, the pre-production, all the way to when it all fell apart, you know? Wow. And they really explain what happened to that film. And I was uh, a little bummed that we didn't get to see it after really seeing everything that was in there. Um, and there's a quote from that film. Uh, from that documentary, uh, one of the artists says, Hollywood wants originality, but they're afraid of it. And that's what I wanted to bring up right now. That's a good is point. that there's, uh, there's, there's this weird skewed line between um, producers who control the money for anybody who maybe not might not be aware of behind the scenes producers. I mean, they're the people who put the money up front. You know, and they're expecting to get their money back mm -hmm. and then some, you know. Right. Uh, your director <clears throat> is going to be your person who's going to put all of those finishing touches. Mm -hmm. uh, director and your editor, because <laughs> director will shoot everything and control all of those actor moments and how that light is. And they've got all this team working with mm -hmm. them and they have to know how to assemble and control that team and guide that team. Uh, but still, in, when somebody is dangling $50 million in front of you for even just a day shooting, mm -hmm. <laughs> not it's a day, a but you know, money, yeah. it is, you know what I mean, you, you know, and they say, by the way, um, could you, could you put my dog in the scene? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's sort of, my dad just told me a story about how Ridley Scott was commenting on, um, uh, getting younger, uh, not as well, not versed, but uh, lesser experienced directors, giving them a chance right. to do something. Uh, like who directed the latest uh, Star Wars film? Oh, Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he was terrific. Yeah, you know, and they were saying that, but uh, but adversely, uh, I heard that on the Han Solo film that they had to bring in Ron Howard to come in and finish a couple of shootings. That's right. I think I heard that, which is. Came out of left field. I would not expect that. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, but but I, I but I think they can say safely say like you know we we know when we have a director that is good at what they do and works well. Yes, producers feel safe in trusting them with their projects. Mm -hmm. However, I still think that there's that weird line of oh, you know they. Uh, they have all this money and they just don't want to give it to anybody, obviously, but they're, they're, they say they want one thing, but they're really, really afraid of letting us go forward right. with that creativity. Anyways. Well, and to tag onto that, uh, maybe we don't, I don't think a lot of us realize this, but every single movie that gets financed is a gamble. <laughs> uh, and I heard this statistic when I was in film school. I don't know uh, if this is more true or less true now, because this was a while ago. But we were told in film school, uh, six of the ten films that get made never, ever uh, recoup their full budget. Oh, wow. uh, So you better hope those last four films do really, really well. And this is why every single studio every year will put out what they call a tent. <coughs> this is the thing that they throw, they throw all their money at that delivers the most promise. What is it called again? A tent pole? A tent pole. Okay. Oh, hold yeah. hold up the studio and the rest of the films for that, for that fiscal year. I did not know that. Yeah. I mean, it's, and it makes sense, you know, but, but then also uh, for certain studios that figure out, well, why can't we have all of our films make that much money, you know? Mm -hmm. And I understand that. I just, I just think it's so, you know, um, frustrating because I don't know if that's ever going to change. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's ever going to come a point where suddenly producers... Um, just are fine with, you know, not, with taking chances. My brother and I, uh, every time we go to Universal Studios, um, we were, 
going through the back lot and we're looking at that great little hall of fame that they have when mm. you're going down the road you know of right, all, the, all of, of the year and the yeah. posters of all the movies uh the little banners that they have there and my brother continually says wow universal really takes some risks they really really take <laughs> yeah. some risk and i look at how <laughs> successful these movies ended up being mm -hmm. you know and i know not every studio is willing to take those kinds of risks you know even when you look at Back to the Future, when you're trying to pitch the idea of it, it's mm -hmm. kind of kind of out, out there. there movie. Yeah, yeah it definitely, it's completely out there. I mean, oh, even yeah. even Blues Brothers. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know if Lorne Michaels had produced any like big film like that prior, mm -hmm. you know, and using a lot of his SNL cast, you know, and a lot of their other friends. What a what a off the wall movie, but a classic, an absolute classic. So. And sometimes you do get really great producers, you know, because they are also writers or directors. Right. I mean, also, Back to the Future, that was produced by Steven Spielberg, right. who was yeah. a director himself. And I think it helps when you've done multiple things, because then you know where the other person is coming from, mm -hmm. you know? So when you're a director-producer, meaning that you are a director who also goes on to produce... Because um, I think Ron Howard's done the same. You I'm know? sure he has. Uh, yeah. yeah, you've seen a bunch of people who have. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, um, Robert Rodriguez is directing a film that's going to be coming out that is, I think, being produced by uh, James Cameron. Interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah I'm sure, dude. that'll be uh, an excellent. Yeah, you're you're, you're, you're taking you're taking Big film. Rodriguez's excellent storytelling with with movies like Once Upon a Time in Mexico and you know Desperado and. Machete, you yeah. know, and, 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 and somebody as uh, grand scale as James Cameron right. from Avatar or even freaking Titanic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say what you will, but I mean that the, the movies are impressive They're to pretty. watch. They're so much fun to watch. Yeah. yeah, and they have solid stories, I think so. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I, I, I hope that mm -hmm. I don't see it going away anytime yeah. soon. You well, know? you know, I think we've sort of entered a cycle ever since literally the turn of the millennium. I remember early in the early 2000s, we got uh, Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter kind of at the same time. Uh, X-Men stepped in and did pretty well. And so I think it uh, turned a lot of movie studios who, again, have always been looking for that tentpole film that is going to uh, be a minimal risk and perform really well and draw a lot of attention. Uh, when these movie studios saw, oh, we can take books and, and superheroes and turn these these existing properties into movies and it'll be a good bet for us. It kind of started this cycle where suddenly we got a lot of adaptations because uh, you know, after Lord of the Rings and Potter, we got just comic book movies nonstop. Mm. Uh, you got the Narnia series, uh, uh, Aragorn with the, the dragons got turned into a movie, uh, Golden Compass was turned into a movie. And these have been hit and miss, of course. They have performed better than others. Rest in peace, Golden Compass. Yes, and... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but I think we've sort of entered a sweet spot where um, we're still in, again, that cycle, and we'll probably be in it forever, because this is what people pay to see. These are the money, movies that make the money. But uh, a lot of studios have also uh, found that the movies that do the best are the ones that get the good writers and the good directors. Mm. Uh, Marvel Studios, I'm sure, has helped set the tone for that with Iron Man and the Avengers. And do you know, yeah. still statistically, the highest grossing genre in film? I do not. Horror. Really? Yes. As seems, much as these wow. are grossing, because the cost to make one of these movies and the cost that they mm -hmm. uh, take to make and what they get back in box office, still pretty good, but for what it costs to make a horror film and the money that that generates mm -hmm. is a higher percentage. Wow. And also, I know that now we have a lot of comic book movies coming mm -hmm. out year-round, like Clockwork. Right. Like what? We've got Black Panther, Avengers, right. and uh, Ant-Man and Wasp. Right, yeah. Coming out. And that's just one studio. You know, next yeah, year. Yeah. And so, and they're going to stagger those, because I know Ant-Man comes out afterwards, which I can't wait for, because I loved Ant-Man. So I know they're going to stagger those. Uh, but also, um, horror movies never have a wrong time of the year <laughs> to come out. They'll come out any time. Summer horror films, fall, yep. uh, Christmas horror films, even if they're not Christmas-themed. Um, Insidious 
is going to be coming up uh, in January, and that's, that's right. the fourth installment into that series. Uh, we're getting uh, The Nun, hmm. which is a spinoff from Conjuring 2. Okay. There was a nun character in there who was terrifying. Hmm. My sister has a painting of The Nun in her hallway right as you walk outside of the bathroom. So if it's like the middle of the night and then you, you know, Watch your step. Around, and, 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 and the nun, she's got these like glowing eyes, you know, cause the rest of the painting is like in pale blues and darks mm. and blacks. And then the eyes are like this yellow. It looks so, and there's a shot in the film. If you haven't seen it, I have to mm. show it to you where it's, they do that. It's dark and you, you just see those eyes glowing anyways. Uh, so yes, statistically speaking, and I'm going to take a quick moment to talk about Blumhouse. Okay. Um, if you do, I look into Blumhouse, because uh, Jason uh, Blum has been producing some of the coolest stuff. Some of the movies I just mentioned are all under Blumhouse. <laughs> and what's nice about it is he had a smaller producer house that is suddenly producing things that maybe a bigger studio might not take a chance oh, on. Nice. But they know. They know what's going to work, you know, because they're coming from that artistic... Uh, you know, uh, M. Night Shyamalan, again, mm -hmm. one of my favorite directors, really, as much as people have, whatever they want to say, whatever, you say whatever you want, um, Split came out, uh, was it last year or this year? I think it was this year. year. Was this year? Yeah. Um, well, we've literally only got two more days left in the year. So Not even. <laughs> oh, We're right. under the 48 hour mark. Yeah. Tomorrow, yeah, tomorrow is, tomorrow's it. Bon Voyage 2017. Yeah. <laughs> or as Ken says, Bon Voyage Titanic. <laughs> Uh, boy, had you. So, so um, Split was brilliant, and I am so happy that um, that people went to go see that film by M. Night Shyamalan, and everyone had such great things to say about it. It was produced by Blumhouse, hmm. and the thing is, like I said, I really feel like Blumhouse knows what to take uh, risks on, or not even a risk, because they feel this is going to work, because what happens when you're in a big studio and all they want you to do is the same thing, you might end up falling into a sad trap like M. Night Shyamalan originally did, because he was still making movies that he believed in and that he he wanted to explore different things, and I'm sure a studio might have wanted one thing, mm -hmm. and even the audience was also wanting another thing, but not every movie is going to be the sixth sense. Tim Burton has right. also fallen victim to the same thing. I mean, he's yeah. done a lot of different kinds of films and a lot of different types of producing over the years, you know? A lot of that people don't even realize that he produced. Like, did you ever see Cabin Boy? No. Great little yeah. film. Great little film with Chris Elliott, you know, mm -hmm. that he produced. And, uh, when you look at a movie like uh, Ed Wood, a biopic, mm -hmm. you know, about an actual director, or even Big Eyes, biopic about, um, you know, Diana, <coughs> excuse me, who painted those oh, artists, yeah. you know. which also had Amy Adams. Yeah, yeah. you know, you, you know, she's great. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what, I, what I'm trying to say, because I'm ranting and rambling, <laughs> is that um, I, I, I hope that somewhere down the line, um, big producers just kind of open their eyes and realize, like, you know what, if I, I could take a couple more risks if I actually took an artistic approach to it. Um, and I don't know if there's ever going to be a way that we make all of our producers artistic producers who also know other things. You know, I think that's another reason why I'm such a progenitor of learning as much as I can and delving in yes. as much as I can, you know, whether it be music, art, or performance because it, it can't hurt you. It can't, you know, to have a better understanding mm -hmm. of how everyone else does their stuff. So Knowledge is power. Knowledge As is I power. say. So yeah, I think that was that was the end of my little Feel better? I always feel better <laughs> when I do this with you. Yeah. So Oh that's that's very nice of you. Well thanks for yeah. listening to that. And hey, Definitely. if you guys have any uh, ideas about you know, um, fixing that system, hey, maybe uh, you're gonna be the next big producer. So yeah. All right. Well, until next time. See ya.